Okay, so today we're going to go over the, uh, the quality assurance for the fifth step, which was running the level two analysis. So hopefully you've run your level twos, and now it is time to check to make sure they ran without any flaws. So this will be pretty quick. What we're going to do is first have a quick directory tour. The, the directory structure is roughly the same as the level ones, but I often find, and, and for myself I found this too, uh, the first time I was navigating around a uh, higher level feet directory, I would often get confused by um, the structure. And I'll explain this in a second. Basically, you have to keep it clear in your head uh, when file names and directory names are referring to, when the numbers in them are referring to contrast from the current levels analysis versus lower level analyses. So I will clarify that. I will also show you my favorite file, which I've shown you before. It's the filtered funk data, but it's called the same thing at each level, but it has a different meaning. No, it's always, it's always the dependent variable. It's just the dependent variable changes from level to level. Also, uh, a simple Python script for combining the PNG files from this level. So as you've seen in the earlier level, FSL tends to generate these PNG files that are used in the HTML output. For FSL, and we've been combining them into a single HTML so that we can quickly uh, view all the runs and all the subjects. Okay, so uh, what to do? Let's go to, uh, let's, no, oh, that's stupid Adobe Reader, things always there. So I'm in my level two directory here. Uh, I just grabbed subject one. So you can see that I have a BG image. So this image here, whenever you get to a higher level analysis, if you ever want to display your stat images on anything, you use this BG image. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this because it's going to keep bouncing in the uh, sidebar. Okay, and all this is, in this case, it's just this subject's structural um, skull strip structural from the lower level analysis. Now for the higher, for the third level analysis, this will be the subject's structurals averaged. So they're first, this, this is the first time we've had the structural in MNI space. I guess that's the important part. See there's a little wacky uh, bit here. That's okay. It's just the skull that got blurred up. I'm not really that worried about it. Uh, I believe I'd use nonlinear registration. Anyhow, so that's all this is. This is just this subject's structural in MNI space. In the third level analyses, we'll see that this is the average over all the subjects structurals in MNI space. So for displaying statistics, I always like to use um, that this image instead of the um, actual MNI template. Huh. Sorry, it's kind of assessing the registration while I'm looking at this image. Anyway, moving along. So then you have a selection of these design dot files. So these are just the files that were used to create the uh, the design matrix. So not actually on my Mac. This was, we already know, this is just a simple one sample t-test right here. Uh, so that was the design matrix. And what else do we have in here? All the design files, the mask file, um, the mean funk image, and the report.html file. So I have one of those open already. Well, maybe I don't. All of them link to the main one, so you can just open the main one. And I uh, ran this on a different computer and moved the files, and this will actually show why you, you typically shouldn't do that. I'm doing it just for the purposes of making the videos because um, it would be too slow for me to load these uh, from the remote machine. Anyway, do the usual. We have the log, so you want to scroll through and make sure that looks okay. Um, the results I didn't run I didn't run any statistics so I'm all I'm going to have here is my design matrix 
and you'll see the registration summary. See, I have a broken link here because it was trying to link to a file from the lower level feed analysis, which it can't access because I moved my files. That's why you shouldn't move them. But uh, the newly, we, we've actually already checked those, so I'm not too concerned that they're not here for me to show to you. But these are the new ones. So this is the sum of all the input masks after transformation to standard space. And you can see the bar here goes from one, which is red, to three. So this takes the mask from each run, since this is a level two analysis, and it sums those masks up after they've been transformed to standard space. And so the goal, what you're looking for here, is a nice yellow brain. You'd want to avoid having orange or red because that means one of the runs didn't have data for part of the brain. So the importance here is because FSL can only complete analyses for full sets of data within a voxel. So if a voxel only has one or two runs, but there are a total of three runs, you will not get statistics for that voxel. And it makes sense because you lose um, the degrees of freedom when they vary over the brain. So that's how it works. And by the time you get to the group level analysis, I've seen people who, I've seen a couple of different variations of this uh, error. One is um, they actually noticed a big chunk of brain is missing and then they just let it go. They're like, oh, that, that chunk of brain isn't there. Or um, it's the same issue. So a big chunk of brain is missing. And either they don't notice or they notice it and they ignore it. And you, you kind of can't ignore it because you're proclaiming that you're running whole brain analysis. And if a huge chunk of brain is missing um, in your group analysis, you have to address that and explain why it wasn't there. So... Um, also, people will say, oh, we didn't see activation in this region of the brain. Well, if that region was left out because you had signal dropout for one subject or something was off, um, then that's really misleading. So you want to make sure this is all yellow. If you see any red, um, you, you know that's not going to be included. And this is just a variation of that. This shows where only one mask is missing. So for this one, you don't want any colors over the brain. Just along the edges is fine because that would we, we would expect there to be some discrepancies in the mask definition near the edges of the brain, and we don't care because there isn't actual brain there anyway, so that part can be left out. So these are the, the only two summary images um, that we need to look at from this level. Typically, the design matrix is so simple. It's just a column of ones that there's no reason to inspect it. Although if you did something um, a bit more non-standard, you can add that into your um, display for the Python script, which I will show you next. Actually, let's go back to the feed directory. So here's where people get confused. You'll see I have two feed directories here, cope1.feet and cope2.feet. So the numbers here don't correspond to this level analysis because for this one I just ran a one sample t-test with a single contrast of one. These numbers refer to the lower level copes that I input into this analysis. So that's what it's referring to. So again, the numbers on the feet directories correspond to the contrast that were fed into this analysis, so the dependent variable. So let's go into one of these. All right, and then this just has copies of all the design setup stuff, um, the example funk image, which is just the um, mean funk. I don't even know what it is. Let's look at it. I know what it is at level one. I don't know if this is the same, same thing here. It's just the structural. That's all it is here. Um, and then we have the filtered funk data. So that is actually a good way to check over your data, both here at the second level and at higher levels, the third level. So this is just showing you the time series plot of the data. And um, what you can do is you can flip through. There's only three here. But this is the dependent variable. And you want to make sure it looks pretty good. Um, you might be asking yourself, well, what would really bad look like? Typically, you just know the whole brain will be really bright or the whole brain will be really dark for something. Um, 
and a frustrating thing is sometimes that happens and you don't, you don't have a really good uh, reason to exclude that run or that subject um, because they, they met all your criteria at earlier levels. So, but it's still good to look for it because if you have an outlier, they're going to influence your group level analysis. Then the mask, the mean funk, we already talked about that. And then the usual, there's a stats directory that has the same files in it as the other one. I only ran one contrast, so here's the parameter estimate, the cope for it. I don't know what this cope interaction is. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to skip that for now. Did not notice that earlier. I shouldn't have had an... Oh, I don't know what this file is. Oops, ignore that. That's not a standard file. Um, I was doing something else. This, this won't exist for you. I created that myself when I was doing something else. Sorry, all the directories I chose. Um, okay, and then the rest is the rest. You have your Z statistic, your T, degrees of freedom image, T stat image, the smoothness, all that good stuff, the residual um, image, and that's it. It's really not a lot to look at here. Um, so last, I'll go over the Python script. So this looks a lot like the other one. So I now grab all the Lev2 directories uh, using Glob Glob. And I'm putting everything in Lev2 QA. And I'm just taking that mask sum overlay PNG and the mask unique overlay PNG file and dumping it into it. And then afterwards, you get something that looks like this. So now I can just flip through all my subjects and make sure, basically, I think it's easier to check this image just to make sure there's no speckly bits on the, um, the gray part of the brain. And the places where you typically have dropout will be the top of the brain or um, like other, like uh, other, and, and anywhere where the edge of your, um, your, your little, your slice acquisition range where that was. Um, if, if you had that just, if it was just a little off for one subject, you might have cut off part of their brain. Um, yeah, so these all look good. So I would say deem this a successful level two across all subjects. Okay, and again, my favorite file is the filtered funk data because it gives me a way to quickly check over all the input data to make sure they look okay. It's I wouldn't say I generally look through that for everybody at the second levels, but definitely at the third level, I always look at the filtered funk image. And you saw the Python script. I'll put a link to the uh, Python script in the description box. That is it. Thank you. Please join the Facebook group, follow on Tumblr, follow on Twitter, or all three, and have a wonderful day.